Hi, I'm Carl Martin Alveso, and this is EEE 130, Ethical Circuit Theory. So why do we need to study electric circuits? First, we need to know what is electrical engineering. So electrical engineering is the profession concerned with systems that produce, transmit, and measure electrical signals. It is exciting and challenging. And electrical engineering is not for everyone. Uh, they are for someone who has a genuine interest and aptitude for applied science and mathematics. So electrical engineering involves obviously electrical systems. So electrical systems are found everywhere. So they are found in homes, schools, workplaces, transportation vehicles. Uh, the one you are using to view this video, your mobile phones, computers. So there are uh, major classifications of electrical systems. So these are communication systems, computer systems, control systems, power systems, and signal processing. In a field as, the, as diverse as electrical engineering, there is one thing they have in common, which is the electric circuits. So before we proceed with the first part of our topic, so here are some tips in problem solving. So first, identify what's given and what's to be found. Next, catch a, third, a circuit diagram or other visual model. Third, think of several solution methods and decide on a way of choosing among them. So we will discuss what are these uh, solution methods. Uh, fourth, uh, calculate a solution. Fifth, use your creativity. And lastly, test your solution. So you may also follow this uh, flowchart. So when you talk about electrical systems, you will hear these two terms uh, many times. So there are voltage and voltage and current. So in circuit theory, the separation of charge creates an electric force, which is the voltage, and the motion of charge creates an electric fluid or the current. So when you think about uh, another way to think about voltage and current is when you talk about a uh, water system. So the water pressure is the voltage. The flow of water is the current. So when you increase when you increase the water pressure, uh, uh, water flow increases. So voltage is the energy per unit charge created by separation of positive and negative charges. So this is given by this equation. V equals to dW over dQ. So where V is the voltage in volts, W is the energy in joules, Q is the charge in columns. Current is the rate of charge flow given by this equation. I equals to dQ over dT. So I equals is the current in amperes, U is the charge in columns, T is the time in seconds. So when we talk about uh, electrical systems, so there are um, circuit elements. So the ideal basic element is, I mean, has three attributes. The first attribute is that it has only two terminals, which are points of connection to the other circuit components. So when you look at this um, figure, these are the terminals. Described mathematically in terms of current and voltage, cannot be subdivided into other terminals. So there are five ideal basic circuit elements. So they are divided into two. So there are active elements and passive elements. 
the active elements are the ones that produce uh, power or energy. So these are the voltage sources and current sources. Passive elements are the ones who absorb power. So these are the resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So first, let's talk about voltage and current sources. So there are two types of sources. So independent sources and dependent sources. Independent sources are sources that establish a voltage or current in a circuit without relying on the voltages or currents elsewhere in the circuit. So this is the symbol for voltage source and the symbol for current source. So for dependent sources, they establish a voltage or current whose value depend on the value of a voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. So they are sometimes called controlled sources. So why? So first let's take a look at this uh, symbol here. So the difference between a now you can see the difference between a independent source and dependent source is by looking at their symbol. So dependent source has a diamond symbol. So for this uh, dependent source, this is a voltage controlled voltage source. Next is a current controlled voltage source. The third is a uh, voltage controlled current source. Next is the current controlled current source. So before we proceed to uh, solving circuits, so let's uh, follow a convention. So for this subject, we will follow the passive sign convention. So what does the passive sign convention state? So whenever a circuit enters through the positive terminal of an element, use a positive sign in any expression that relates the voltage to the current. Otherwise, use a negative sign. Let's keep this in mind. Now let's talk about power and energy. Although voltage and current are useful variables in the analysis and design of electrically based systems, the useful output of the system is often non-electrical, and this output is expressed in terms of power and energy. For example, a 300 watt bulb delivers more light than a 100 watt bulb. Next is that we need to keep in mind that all practical devices have limitations on the amount of power that they can handle. So power is the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. It's given by this equation. P equals to dW over dt. The change in energy over change in time. Where P is the power in watts, W is the energy in joules, and T is, T is the time in seconds. So the power associated with the flow of charge follows directly from the definition of voltage and current, which can be rewritten into this equation. So dW over dq times dq over dt. Here in this expression here is the voltage, and this right here is the current. And finally, P equals to V times I, where P is the power in watts, V is the voltage in volts, and I is the current in amperes. So the passive sign convention and power. So remember last slide that the passive sign convention states that whenever the current enters through the positive terminal of an element, use a positive sign in any expression that relates the voltage to the current. Otherwise, use a negative sign. So, take a look at this, uh, I mean, these figures. So, A, B, C, D. This figure A, so the current enters the positive terminal of the element. So, use 
a positive sign in the expression that relates the voltage to current. So when writing power, V equals to Vi, since it follows the passive sign convention. So when we take a look at uh, T, it is leaving the positive terminal. So we use a negative um, sign in the expression between uh, that relates the voltage and current. Same goes with uh, figure C. So figure C, the current enters the negative terminal of the element. So use a negative sign. And lastly, this uh, figure D, uh, it leaves, uh, the current leaves the uh, negative terminal or it's just the same as when I is entering positive terminal. So use a positive uh, sign in the expression. So if the power is positive, power is delivered to the circuit or it is absorbing power. If the power is negative, power is being extracted from the circuit or is it, it is uh, supplying power. Uh, let's talk about uh, another basic element which is the resistors. So, the ability of a material to resist the flow of charge is called its resistivity. So, different materials have different resistivity. So, resistance is the physical property of element or device that impedes the flow of current. It is represented by the symbol R and the unit ohm. So, Ohm's law states that Following the passive sign convention, Ohm's law states that V equals to I times R. If you take a look at this uh, figure A, so the current enters the positive terminal of the element. So Ohm's law is positive. So for figure B, uh, when you take a look at this current, the current is entering the negative terminal or it is leaving the positive terminal. So use a uh, negative uh, negative sign. So power in the resistor. So for figure A, power is given by P equals to Vi. So following the passive sign convention. And V by Ohm's law is equals to I times R. When we substitute uh, equation one to equation two to equation one, P equals to I squared R. So in terms of current, P equals to I squared R. So when we take a look at the uh, second figure, uh, our is given by P equals to negative VI because the current is entering the negative terminal or it is leaving the negative terminal. And for Ohm's law, since I is entering the negative terminal, so V is V is negative I times R. So substituting equation one to equation, equation two to equation one. So we have P equals to negative uh, quantity, negative I times R times I. So equals to I squared R. So uh, regardless of the polarity of voltage and current direction, the powers of the terminals of a resistor is always positive, meaning the resistor is always absorbing power. So that's why it is a passive 